And I always looking at him, it's like, I gotta start coming to this barbershop. Yeah. My barbershop ain't got no personality. Oh, yeah. yeah. In America, you don't go into a black barbershop just to get a haircut. And it's been that way for a long time. In 1863, after emancipation, African-American men with haircutting skills opened their own barbershops and became business owners. Then, and still today, black barbershops serve as informal social clubs and meeting places. And you go there to get advice, to talk through your problems, and to pick up some news in the neighborhood. But now some barbers are doing more than just giving haircuts. They're turning the page as they groom a generation of new young customers. Next football season, I'm gonna give you a ball head. 15, 20 minutes of your life where you're just doing something productive. That's it. Every day she read the pages of the Chicago Defender, a newspaper of her people published by Robert Ab Abai, Abai, I think. The place where he belonged was with his lovely... Abbott. Abbott. Robert Abbott. Robert Abbott. Were these two people? Grand. Grand who? Parents. Had a dream in which an old woman gave her the ingredients for a potion that not only stopped balding but quickened regrowth. My favorite, it's um, it's that blue dinosaur and that white dinosaur. Do you know the name of it? Jesse Owens, who took four gold medals in the 1936 Olympics, was born in James C. Cleveland in Danville, Alabama, the seventh of eleven children. Well, I don't know the blue one, but but the white one is a dinosaur. In a Michigan town named for a Greek army hero, a group of African-American barbers is doing some simple but heroic work of their own. They started a program. Read to your barber, get a haircut, then get a $2 refund. I just decided one day, I said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna just go to work. I'm gonna start giving kids a book to read. If they read it, tell me what it's about, I give them two dollars. On the internet, barbers Alex Fuller and Ryan Griffin read about kids reading to their barbers. And they began a version of this idea themselves at Fuller Cuts in 2015. My name is Ryan Griffin, I'm uh, 44 years old. I'm a husband, a father of three. I'm the youngest I of six. Am Rosa Parks. I am Rosa Parks. She's Rosa Parks. Initially attended Collin Junior College in uh, Plano, Texas, where I played a little basketball. Uh, I ended up finishing college at Eastern Michigan University. I graduated with a double major in African American Studies and Sociology. It is time for some football. I still don't say football. It's time. Um, a sports fanatic, a coach. Um, Becoming a barber, I've become a a counselor, a mentor, a fashion expert. <laughs> Remember, read what's in front of you, okay? Don't mm -hmm. guess what it is. Read what's in front of you. I make sure I let the kids know that you're here for practice. If you can't read out loud, read out loud. I help you. If you uh, are, are a slow reader or a timid reader, read to me. You know, I help you. If you have trouble uh, pronouncing words, I'll help you. So as long as the kids know that they're getting help, and that I genuinely care, the kids change. The kids literally change right in the chair. They go from, man, I'm not sure I want to do this, to, man, he's really helping me. They're, they're really helping me. So now, tell me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the unfair things that you noticed that Rosa Parks spoke about. What, what were some of the unfair things? The kids don't just read to me, but they also have to tell me or their parent what the book is about because comprehension is just as important as reading. The water fountains, the buses, and the schools. The water fountain, the buses, and the schools. Okay, and why do you think that 
the water fountains, the buses, and the schools. What about them? What was, what was the significance of those? Also, with this being a predominantly African-American shop, I wanted the kids to read positive stories about themselves, whether the, it's history, science, sports, art, what have you, po politics. I just want the kids to be able to see positive images, know positive images, read about positive images, because I think that goes a long way. I think it'll stick with them. And if they read story after story after story about a positive image about someone like them, it will be harder for someone to tell them who they're not or what they can't be.